And so what did you do? Did you, do you go to like a doc? Like, is there a special yeah. specialty doctor that you start seeing? Well, what I did initially is I started taking black market hormones. <laughs> so, so I started ordering, um, I guess it's called the gray market. Because basically you're ordering overseas prescription hormones. Hmm. Um, so it's, t- it's two things that you start taking if, you, if you're MTF, male to female. One is um, a testosterone, block, an anti-androgen. So hmm. it blocks the testosterone. It, 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 lower, it lowers your blood level of testosterone down to like a biological female level. Hmm. Um, and then the other thing you take is, is estrogen, which raises your estrogen levels to a biological female level. Is, and, there, is there any danger mm-hmm. in lowering your, uh, like you're, you were born a man. I, I don't yeah. know the biology, but I know like in, in men, adult men whose um, testosterone goes super low, it can cause like medical complications. Do you experience stuff like that? Well, it is important. You have to have some kind of sex hormones in your body or it is dangerous. Hmm. So you need either test- um, testosterone or estrogen. Oh, okay. So if you have estrogen, that kind of fixes some of the problems that happen if you just have oh. very low testosterone. Like for, um, for instance, like, I know it's, I don't know, it's been a while since I, I learned about the specifics of this, but it's like bad for your bones to like not have any sex hormones or not have high enough levels. Um, it's pretty like there's like some side effects of of doing um, you know testosterone blockers especially, but it's for me it's really there's really been no significant complications. Mm. Like it changes it changes more than your body though. Like it changes your moods, it changes your mm. sex drive, like it changes all kinds of things. Um, you Interesting. Know, gender is not just a social like it, it is a social construct, but the biological sex is a real thing. And when you change your hormones, it changes a lot of stuff <laughs> with that. That's that you really fascinating. Have thought, yeah. So you're taking the the blocker, the mm-hmm. and you're taking the estrogen. Are you, are these injections? How do you take this? I just take them as a pill. Some people okay. do injections. Injections seem pills. scary, especially yeah. if you're getting shit from like the. That's black what market. I think too. Yeah. Is that injections? I, I'm afraid of needles, so I'm like, well, I'll just do pills. <laughs> if you, I, yeah, I didn't know you could do pills. Go pills. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and so, how? What did you first start feeling like when you're? I'm really curious about. You said that you're having different mm-hmm. moods and sexual drives and all this. I'm really curious about yeah. the differences and that you started to feel. Well, when you lower your testosterone, I mean, it does what you'd expect. Like it, it makes it lowers your sex drive um, for sure. Um, and it's it. I would um, you know, a lot of people report conflicting things. Some people say. Uh, that they feel more emotional, that they cry more when you have estrogen. Also, you might be slower to anger. I mean, it's kind of like the opposite of what like steroids would do where you're mm. like raising your testosterone and roid rage or whatever. Mm. Um, I guess physically, um, it, it sort of, your skin gets smoother mm. um, and kind of, it, ch- it really changes the texture of your skin. It changes the texture of your hair, especially your body mm. hair. You have like less body hair that starts to go away. Uh, you start growing breasts um, and it, it kind of redistributes the fat on your body. So like, whereas men tend to kind of like accumulate more f- body fat around the gut, like women will accumulate more of it like in the hips, mm-hmm. for example. So you sort of notice these changes in the shape of your body. That's, that's amazing. Did it, were you, what yeah. did you feel when you first started knowing this stuff, noticing this stuff? Did it feel like, ma- I mean, it's pretty it felt amazing. Like magic. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, it like is incredible. I mean, it's like, it, 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 it's almost kind of annoying to be around someone who's in that early part of transition because it's all they want to talk about. And it's right. definitely all I wanted to talk about. Like it's, it's those first few months when you're on hormones, it's like, oh my God, it's, it's, it, it does feel like a miracle. Mm. Like it's, it's hard to believe that it's, that it's happening, but, um, I guess I've gotten so I've, I've, I've kind of gotten so used to it now that it's like lost that sense of magic. Yeah. But definitely, yeah, when I started, it, it seemed like magic. And so now you you have to continue to take these. I'm assuming, right? Yes. Yeah. So I um I I have to continue to take uh, these basically for the rest of my life. Um, both of them in, until I get um with with what we now usually just call bottom surgery, which used to be called like having a sex change Hmm. but basically if you don't have i mean to get really anatomical about it like if you do not have male gonads your body is not producing testosterone uh so you you don't have to take the testosterone blocker anymore Hmm. so is that kind of do you have that goal for yourself to get that surgery i do yeah Hmm. and 
Just FYI, don't ask trans people about that. I don't oh, really? care. But uh, a lot of trans people don't want to talk to their, talk about like what surgeries they want to get. Oh, okay. I don't care, so don't worry about it. So I, I apologize. That's the. I guess that was my fear of going into this conversation is that I don't know what. Well, I'd ra- I'd rather you not. I'd rather you talk through this without feeling like you can't ask questions because I feel like, especially when you're doing a podcast, like it's valuable to educate people. About this I, stuff. I, I am super yeah. interested. I, I have no, like I have no firsthand account of any of this stuff. And I, yeah. and my, my intentions are like, I, uh, I, I truly am <laughs> extremely curious and, and I, and super empathetic with your journey. So I hope I'm not offending anyone. No, you, no, you're not, you're not offending me. But I'm curious, so so your so your intention, if you give me permission to ask this mm-hmm. question, is yeah. to do you remove, do you remove everything or just the uh, go now? Well, so bottom surgery has gotten very sophisticated for male to female transitions. I mean, what they can do is they can basically create a surgically constructed um, vagina and labia hmm. and clit. <laughs> So, wow. um, yeah, it's very, it's gotten very sophisticated. I mean, they've been doing this, like, like, I guess they first started doing these surgeries in like the 1930s. And back then really? it was, yeah, Holy that's shit. when the, that the first one was 1930s. It was very crude back then. Um, but you know, it's been almost a hundred years that the surgeons have been doing this now. So it's gotten very fancy. Like there's, 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 there's versions of it now that are done with robots. Um, mm. and you know, it's, uh, you know, different surgeons have like different methods, but a lot of the people's results now are very good. Like you can, ha- they're sexually functional. You can have orgasms. Mm. Like, um, so it's, it's not, you know, some people think, oh, it's just a wound. You're just creating a hole or like, no, no, it's not that it's, it's much, it's much more sophisticated than that. It, 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 the results, they look pretty, uh, natural and, and uh, they they're, they're <laughs> pretty functional so your, not, yeah. your intention is to do that are, are oh, yeah. what is are you what are you waiting for I guess is my, um, my well b- basically I have done I had um like facial surgery a year ago mm-hmm. uh, a year and a half ago and that was kind of my, my first priority because well I'm a youtuber so you know <laughs> but I think that that surgery was was tough and it's kind of maybe like I need a break before I do more surgery. Tough in what way? Like just painful um, and it's long. painful, yeah. difficult, and like kind of terrifying. Like hmm. going into a major surgery is scary. Like the night before, because this is the first time I'd had a major surgery. So the night before I was like, hmm. you know, it kind of set in like, oh God, like tomorrow they're going to like cut into my face and, and saw my bones down. And it's like, that's like in the abstract, you're like, okay, let's do that. But then when mm-hmm. you think about it happening to your skull, you're like, Oh, it makes you, um, you almost feel faint just thinking. I'm also just squeamish. Like I'm a little baby about this kind of stuff. So, well, and I would imagine that the, the other surgery we just talked about would probably be even a scarier prospect. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a major, major surgery. So, you know, yeah, it takes like a month to to recover. Um, you know, people, you're on your feet in a couple of weeks. Um, Hmm. but, um, yeah. And the other thing is the wait lists for these things can actually be quite long. So, oh, the wait list, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. So, a lot of I, surgeons, there's, there's probably mm-hmm. not a lot of doctors that specialize in that. Is that the issue? Yeah, it's a very specialty thing. I mean, it used to be the case that a lot of girls would go to Thailand to get it done because Ooh. there are these. Um, oh, it's and, common there. There's a lot yeah, of. Yeah, tra- yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a kind of, um, I guess, a culture of, of sort of, of trans women there and a lot of doctors who catered to it. And so, some of the, you know, for a long time, like the Thai surgeons were actually the best. Mm. Um, so, you would go there to get it. Was Doctor Suporn was his name? Was there's just one guy doing it? Yeah, there's just one guy doing it. Just hundreds or thousands of trans women have have been through this one guy. Um, But a lot of American surgeons have have gotten quite good in the last decade. So, what what kind of surgery did you have in your face? If I can ask that, I'm kind of curious. What Uh, this was an issue you to help because we talked briefly about like your wanting to pass as a female. Was this basically to? to make you look more female, the facial surgery? Yes. So facial surgery is like, it's a con, it's kind of a controversial thing, right? Hmm. And that's true. Even if you're not trans, like if you have, suppose you're a woman and you have like a very angular nose and you get a rhinoplasty to make it more like straight or 
there's definitely people who have negative feelings about that mm. because there's people who say like, oh, well, you're just trying to replicate this like Eurocentric beauty standard, like in and, and, and all this kind of thing, right? So there's definitely like a trans version of this where people say like, no, like the goal of being trans should not be to look the same as a cis woman. Mm. Um, but, you know, it's ultimately, I think it's a personal choice, right? Some, um, it's... For me, that there was a lot of reasons why I wanted to to have the facial. I can tell you. I can tell you exactly what I, what they did. They kind of um, sort of shaved down my brow bone hmm. so that uh, if you look at like a lot of like people in profile, you notice that on average, men tend to have a more prominent, like stronger brow, hmm. um, and they also kind of narrowed my jaw a little bit. I used to have like a more kind of square chin. It's now pointy mm. um they did uh what's called a trachea shave where basically you it's like a little i have a little scar here where they like basically like um make your adam's apple smaller wow. so it looks more like a, a cis woman's throat um and uh so that, that's what i did and basically it's it's kind of, it makes it sort of easier for me to read to people as female. So I used to feel like when I left the house, I felt like I couldn't leave the house without a full face of makeup, mm. you know, like I, cause I was so anxious about like, Oh God, like how are people going to perceive me? Are they going to see me as a woman? Am I going to get clocked? Am I going to get yelled at if I go to the bathroom? You know, um, there's all these kinds of anxieties that you have about, you know, it's not just vanity. Like some people think maybe there's a little bit of vanity, but like there's, it's not just vanity, right? Like, yeah. like it's like a lot of trans people have safety concerns. And if you're able to be less detectable, like it's, it, it can make your life you easier. You feel more yourself safer. beside that. Yeah. You just, you feel like more yourself. I totally understand that. Yeah. And then there's, and then there's also that of course. Yeah. So yeah, to me, to me, this was something that I, I'm very happy I did it. I have no regrets. Um, that, but it, you, so you had all yeah. that done in one session? In one session. So that, yeah. that sounds absolutely brutal. It's terrible. Like, oh my goodness. Like was you, your face uh, all bandaged and everything? It was, yeah, like full head of bandages, exactly. God. And like, how do you even file down the forehead? Because like, you must have had a huge, I don't know how they do that. That's well, crazy. Well, I don't want to get too like gross out about it, but, but but they basically, I mean, surgery is, it's amazing like what they can do. Basically, they, they do an incision behind your hair. Oh. And they go under. Whoa. They kind of, like, <laughs> they kind of peel your forehead down. Holy they, shit. It's, it's, it's like, it's, it's scary, but like they're, they're good at it. And yeah. so like, basically I used to have a, like, um, you know, there was kind of like a, almost like a bald spot here where the, where mm. the incision was across mm -hmm. the top of my head. That's gone now because the hair has grown over it. So you can't even notice that there's, there's no scars. It's mm. very, it's like the result is very, like, you can't tell that surgery happened. Wow. That, yeah, that's, that sounds, wow. All that at one time. How long did it take you to recover? Um, I would say it, would, it was about 10 days of recovery oh, and then the bad. swelling that lasted another month. And right. Then, like, 